Hello again with Laptop Media Video Review. Again, one of the new Acer notebooks is in our focus today. This is the Aspire V15. In this mainstream series, you can find it under a lot of different specs and prices and different name as well. You can find it under V3 or V5 name, but basically it's one and the same concept with different specs and prices. This is a design we are already familiar with, but now in 15.6 inch version bringing nice refreshing look to the laptop. The construction is nice and solid and the aluminium texture on the screen backplate is nicely crafted, leaving the impression of an elegant and stylish notebook under your palms. Most of the construction is made of plastic, but it still feels durable enough to trust it during some rough time with the laptop. Trackpad is big, providing you nice surface where it is absolutely easy to smoothly move your fingers on and precisely control your computer. That was a very nice surprise to me. This notebook is part of a product line that is supposed to offer a wide range of tech specs and of course aiming to meet the needs of people with more budget limitations. You can find it in a higher price bracket with 6500HQ or 6700HQ from the Skylake platform. There is a variety of specs down here, apart from being very powerful CPUs, they also host the capable Intel HD Graphics 530. Using those processors, the Aspire V15 jumps ahead of some gaming machines having superior hardware at lower price. Of course, there are much more powerful Republic of Gamers or Alienware or Predator laptops by Acer themselves, but when talking about price-to-spec comparison, things look really good for the new Aspire V15. Graphics is provided by NVIDIA, the GTX 940M or GTX 950M, very nice solutions with up to 4GB of GDDR3 memory. Yes, it is not the more capable and popular GDDR5 used in many other high-performance models like 960 for example, but this is a laptop of a different price category after all. So that is quite understandable. Overall, it looks pretty balanced in those terms. It will give you serious power anyway, and if you are not some hardcore gamer, then you will most likely be absolutely satisfied by the performance of this laptop. The powerful hardware affects the battery and it will give us a bit lower results than what we used to see from such battery. However, you can still rely on almost 4 hours and a half of web browsing as well as over 4 hours and a half of video playback. Gaming is reduced to just around 2 hours approximately, but this is still considerably good result when the device is under high performance pressure. But in general, the battery is fine by my opinion. Screen is pretty standard in terms of panel, this is a TN matrix, but in terms of color performance, it is absolutely great. Full HD resolution with a color reproduction of 100% sRGB gamut and 93% of the RGB gamut. The one fact we disliked was the presence of pulse width modulation or PWM trembling in almost all levels of screen brightness. You can read more about our benchmark tests including temperatures at laptop media using the links on screen. Overall, my impression of this laptop is pretty positive. It has a nice design, not too thick and heavy and offers good balanced price to spec ratio, very good touchpad and backlit keyboard which is also cool and of course fits variety of specs and budget limitations. So definitely it is to be considered as a nice alternative in the mid-range class laptops. Read more about it at laptopmedia.com and compare it to other competitors there of course. Our benchmark ranking will help you in that. Thanks for watching, subscribe and see you soon. Bye!